Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Warhammer 40,000 or 40k I guess is what people who are actually understanding of it call it. Uh, Warhammer 40k Regicide. This is a brand new game on Steam. It's been in early access for a while. Has just come out in full release. And I should add the caveat right at the start here that I'm pretty much 100% uh, naive and ignorant and unfamiliar with Warhammer 40k as a universe. This is the first game in the Warhammer 40k universe I've ever played. I've never played Dawn of War, Dawn of War 2 Retribution. I've never played any of the tabletop releases or anything like that. I don't collect the, the figurines. Uh, I hope that that's not an insulting word to call them, because I didn't mean it to be insulting. Basically, I've played Blood Bowl, so I'm a little bit familiar with games workshoppy stuff, but this is the first game in the Warhammer 40k universe I've ever played, so your mileage may vary when it comes to that stuff. What is this? Um, it is a strategy game... I know that, like, a year ago, every game I played, I was like, it's kind of like the Binding of Isaac is Belonghi. Now I'm like, it's kind of like XCOM, but it is a, uh, a grid-based, turn-based, squad-based uh, tactics and strategy game. So a little bit like XCOM is what I'm trying to say in twice as many words, but with the rules of chess overlaid on top of it. So, you know, imagine if in XCOM, you know, you could do chip damage with your gun and stuff like that, or, you know, you could do melee attacks. But also, if you had, like, an XCOM unit who was a pawn, and then someone moved one square ahead of them on a diagonal, you could capture them with, like, a fatal move, basically. So the, the rules of chess supersede the rules of the strategy in this. It's one of those things that's probably going to be a little bit easier to see um, in an actual mission once we get in here. It has multiplayer. Uh, I have not touched the multiplayer at all. It's a little bit uh, of that asynchronous style of, like, Frozen Synapse or Frozen end zone or something like that where um, you know you get basically chess by correspondence matches with other people and then you play against them and you have like you know maybe five or six games that you have turns going on in it at the the same time but it might take a day between turns or something like that some people are into that some people are not um Let's go to the campaign here. I've played almost two hours of this so far, and we're almost done with the first campaign. Maybe we'll be able to finish it over the, the course of the video here. Uh, but we'll just do, like, a pretty early episode, or a pretty early one here. Basically, the campaign missions, there is a story here, which is why I say your mileage may vary with respect to Warhammer 40k stuff. Um, there is a story here, and what's more interesting about it is that there are unique... Um, Setups. So basically, like, the, the reason I'm sort of more into this game than I thought I would be is that I played a lot of competitive chess when I was growing up, and uh, these are kind of like chess puzzles with a little bit of, like, a non-chess element involved in it as well. I'm not sure I'm 100% on board, but the more I played, the more I was kind of like, I get it. At first I was like, this isn't chess, I don't understand, and then I was like, this isn't XCOM, I don't understand, but as I started altering my strategy to kind of work within both of those frameworks, it became much more interesting. Let us take to the field and give the orcs what they want. A fight they will never forget. Okay, so it is fully voice acted. Uh, there is a cutscene that sets the stage, but everything else is voice acted. Um, the first campaign here is basically like we're the uh, Space Marines, basically, and we found an orc patrol and we've kind of been chasing it, but there's something a little bit more dangerous, like maybe they're leading us into an ambush, and the way that that's framed in game mechanics is we keep getting introduced to harder and harder pieces. Like usually first we start with, um, you know, facing enemy pawns, then enemy knights, enemy bishops, and uh, enemy queens uh, come later, and I, I haven't actually had a campaign mission that's actually just a full chess match, but you can do that in the skirmish mode, so. Um, here we go, our primary objective, eliminate all orc lutas, which I believe are these guys right here. Ludas, uh, you can see the chess analog there, are bishops. That's their HP, or their wounds, I should say. Their armor, their toughness, their weapon skill, and their strength. All of that, you know, goes into various arithmetic uh, computations that will spit out a damage and uh, a toughness that basically they'll have. Uh, or an, an offense and defense, I should say. Secondary objective, eliminate three shooter boys. So those will be those guys here, which are pawns. And the lose condition is all of our devastators are gone. So we're the space marines. Our version of the bishop is the uh, the devastator. So as you can see, it's got less HP than the orc uh, ludas, but or less wounds, I should say. But it, it probably is balanced for in some other direction. Yeah, it looks like it has more armor and maybe more weapon skill. Yeah, more weapon skill. Anyway. The game is divided into two phases here. There is a movement phase, and then there is a combat phase. I think probably the best way to do this is just to play around here to start. So I'm going to move... You can only make one move on your movement phase. I'm going to move my bishop. I have five of them here, which is a little unusual, but I'm going to move my bishop here. Nicely animated, by the way, and there's fully, uh, you know, animated kill animations and stuff like that. You'll see them over and over, but, you know, it, it is nice instead of just like, oh, you kind of knocked the piece out of the way. Um... The, uh, the reason I move my bishop here is so that in the future I can capture this bishop 
uh, with one move. And if he wants to capture me, then I have something there to capture him as well. So I, I basically want to capture all of the uh, the Orc Ludas here as easily as possible. And then we don't even have to get too much involved with the combat. So, uh, then we have three things that we can do during our actual uh, initiative phase here. Some things cost two, like we have an overarching squad ability called Assail. A potent psychic assault on the enemy rank ranks, shaking their resolve with a 75% chance to be pinned. Pinned units cannot take any actions during their initiative phase. So maybe we could try using that here. And we've dropped that on them, and luckily the Orc Luda did get stunned, so he's not going to be able to move next turn, which means I should be able to just capture him unless somehow we get someone in position to, to stop it. Um, now we only have one move left, and I'll see if we have any shots that we can take. We don't, I think, have any shots that we can take. So I'm instead just going to use this move called Go to Ground, and this takes a defensive stance, which improves the toughness of that unit. Then it's the enemy turn. So they've moved a pawn up, which actually is a, a good move for them, because if I take that, I will get captured myself. Then they dropped uh, kind of the same thing on me and pinned down several of my units. So I've got an interesting, uh, I've got some interesting stuff to think about here on my movement phase. You, one of the things that's very important here is that you actually have to take a move. You can't not take a move, and sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where you don't want to take a move because you have to move a pawn into a position where it's going to be taken or something like that. But hopefully we'll see some more of that strategic depth. So I'm going to move this um, Devastator, aka our Bishop, up here. You can also use space to skip the animations if you're tired of them. Um, keep in mind, you can only move once, so I can't just capture this piece now and then feel like that's okay. Um, you can only make one move, so you've really got to dedicate yourself to it. I think, why don't we try now to possibly kill, um, the, the Orc, uh, Shooter Boy here. So we'll take this unit and we'll do an attack, 64% chance to hit. That is going to hit. Lucky for us. And enemies are not, um, paper thin, if, if I may use that terminology. Basically, they're, they're not weak. Uh, they're pretty bullet spongy. They take several hits to die, especially when you factor in that there is the, um, you know, only a, basically a two-thirds chance to hit. That's a very common archetype. That one missed, actually. Uh, a very common, like, mathematical or probabilistic archetype is basically a 64% chance to hit. We'll have this unit go to ground so that they are a little bit more defended in, in case of danger next time. And they are going to move this bishop out of the way, which means that I can actually capture it easily here. Um, what I was trying to get at before is just that it's much easier to capture units than it is to kill them, but you can kill them from a wider variety of places, obviously. You don't have to be right next to them. Um, what I will say is that the AI, sometimes, from a chess perspective, makes some horrendous moves. This is a horrendous move, to move this bishop right here, where on this turn, I can just walk over here and capture it free of charge. Um, yeah, they're still doing it here. You know, this is a nice little kill animation that we have here. We've, we've worn him down, and then we will take his place there. I will say that sometimes it will look like it's a bad move, but it can actually be an okay move. Like, if I was to move my bishop here, it would look terrible because the pawn could capture me. But by being close to this unit, I could do some more high damage moves. Like, just as an example, I could use Assault when you're right next to a unit. Which is a, a much greater chance to hit, and it does more damage. Um, so if it's possible you could move right next to a unit and then kill it, and then you're not at risk. But I still think that move from the AI there was was pretty shocking. It, like, very, very terrible. Um, maybe we can pin an enemy? Nah, I don't think we need to pin this enemy. Instead, we'll just try to um, whittle it down. We'll probably capture it on the next turn anyway, but, you know, we might as well do something beyond going to ground here. I do think the AI, at least in the, the first campaign here, has made some pretty terrible moves, but I don't know how much of that is based on the fact that I rel I played like a decent amount of competitive chess, like I said. And that's not me trying to brag, I would be the, like, that would be the weirdest way to brag of all time. But I have probably a little bit more of a chess uh, background than a lot of people who will play this game. Or maybe you have to have a little bit of a chess background to be interested in a game like this in the first place. Uh, I really feel like, and uh, we're just going to capture this one now, I really feel like a, a, a good chunk of whether or not you're going to be interested in this game comes down into, like, are you the right kind of geek to enjoy this? And I hope that it isn't taken as an insult because I don't mean it that way. But, like I said, this is XCOM at its core. Superseding that are the rules of chess. So that's, like, two orders of geekiness. And then superseding that is the fact that it's all steeped in this Warhammer 40k mythology. Uh, which is, again, its own, its own layer of uh, geekiness on top of that. So if you're the right kind of person who kind of, like... You know, you got two out of three of those going on, or you got three out of three of those going on. I think you could actually really like this, and one of the things I was surprised when I was doing my, my due diligence today was that this is actually a pretty cheap release. Like, I was expecting this to be a $25, $30 game just because it's got that Games Workshop 
pedigree associated with it, and, you know, it's, it's in the Warhammer universe, which is an established universe, so we killed that shooter boy and then we'll just have this guy go to ground. Um, we might want to kill three shooter boys just so that we can get the secondary objective complete, but we'll see. Um, we're, we're gonna accomplish the objective probably pretty easily here regardless, as you can likely guess. Um, like, we can just put this guy here, and then we can capture him next turn. But, um, yeah, this is, uh, it's... 16 Canadian, which is going to mean that it's 15 US dollars, which is actually a price point, uh, actually, don't use go to ground. What if we can use, oh, oh, it's our movement phase first, sorry, my mistake. No, I've already moved. Okay, I've made a terrible mistake. Let's click on a different unit to cancel that. Let's try to use pin. Now we can't pin the, the Luda, which is what I wanted to do. All right, so we'll do, um... The snapshot here. I actually think, like, that's $15, $16 is a price point that I'm used to seeing out of kind of like, you know, double-I, triple-I indie games, to use a term that not everybody is super happy with. But, uh, I think you get where I'm going for with that one, basically. Please use go to ground on yourself. I've gotten myself a little confused here. We'll use go to ground there again. So I really think that the price is right for kind of what is an interesting one-off in the Warhammer universe. And I'll admit, like I said, at first I was like, I kind of don't buy it. Um... I'm... Oh, we're gonna get hit here for sure, I think. Yeah. Um, just because it would be inconvenient for us to be hit, of course. I don't know what's going on there. His animation glitched out a little bit. Uh, let's, uh, let's move this guy back here and prepare to take this pawn and then take this guy out. Um, at first I was like, you know, I don't get it because I'm trying to play it like it's a chess game or I'm trying to play it like it's XCOM and it wasn't working out fantastically for me. But uh, once I kind of wrap my head around the fact that it's neither chess nor XCOM, but some kind of weird uh, amalgamation of, of both, I found myself enjoying it quite a lot more. That looked like it hit to me. Again, animations, um, I, I like them. It adds a little bit of character to the game. Sometimes a little, a little spotty, and you do get used to seeing the same ones over and over. But part of that is um, also... We'll just heal our unit here, which is another ability we have. Part of that is also because we have... Uh, uh, we have just all five bishops here, so we don't get to see any of the other units animated, but we'll see that as we get moving a little bit further into the game. But yeah, I found myself enjoying it a little bit more as I've been playing it. Not to say that this is a must-own game or anything like that, but I do think that it is accessible beyond what you'd expect uh, from let's, what, let's be honest, is a pretty intimidating game title in the form of Warhammer 40k Regicide. I was like, I don't know what to expect. I don't know if this is going to be turn-based strategy or like an action RPG or a strategy RPG, if it's going to be like some Divinity Original Sin stuff or if it's going to be, you know, I don't want to say Shadowrun because that's not really what I'm going for is the, the uh, Cyberpunk vibe. I almost said spider punk. I'm gonna try to pin this guy and he is pinned which means we actually will be able to uh, capture him on the next turn I think. We might as well weaken him first just because we've got nothing else to do. Although you know what I actually think that he will be able to move during his uh, movement phase he just won't be able to attack during his initiation phase so we will probably lose a piece here but that's okay. But uh, yeah the more I played it the more I'm actually like this is um I, I get it, and I'm actually having a pretty fun time with it. Like, I found myself putting in more than the hour that was necessary for my, ad, you know, average due diligence for a Let's Look At. And also, the you know, not only is it a, if we're going to be polite, a value price game, but in addition to that, it is, like, really freaking long from a single-player perspective. Obviously, the multiplayer stuff, your mileage may vary depending on how much your friends would even be into something like this. Um, again, this is a move that would be probably half decent in chess maybe but in in this game should probably work out pretty well for us because we can do an assault here and maybe get the kill um we do have pieces to back it up but uh, most of the time you probably wouldn't want to do that yeah we've killed him um and we've we've won the match here but yeah this is a the first campaign is 10 the first act of the campaign i should say is 10 missions long each one if you're playing as fast as I was playing there, which you might, your mileage may vary, you might be faster or slower, is like 10 minutes. So that's like 100 minutes times 5 campaigns, 500 minutes. So you're looking at almost 10 hours there if you never lose, which you're probably going to lose. So it's, it's really quite a comprehensive game for its length of time as well. Even though it says there were only 6 minutes elapsed there, I, I tend to disagree. So um, we have gotten some experience there. You get more experience um, when you complete your secondary objectives as well. We did get this secondary objective done. Primary objective, eliminate all orc lutas. Oh, we've already done these, so we don't get uh, this, the bonus again, I guess. Um, but we got some experience. When you get that experience, you can level up. So we can go into our armory, and we can, we can purchase upgrades. So I have 165 skill points right now. Um, these upgrades indicate the abilities that we have 
at our disposal in the actual matches. So right now, you saw a sail, which was basically pinning the enemy down or having a 75% chance to pin them. We also have an Iron Halo. You get these abilities later in the campaign, basically. You'll, you'll see them on the next campaign mission we do. Um, Iron Halo negates the next damage that this unit would have taken. Only in death heals a little bit, and Artificer's Armor gives a little bit more HP. But we could also buy maybe... Um, Angel of Death. Surrounding enemies are cursed with hesitant fear. Their abilities cost double the regular IP cost until a friendly unit is eliminated. Or... Auspex. Unit engages its Auspex scanner, increasing the critical hit chance of itself in nearby allies. allies. So that was a bad one. Uh, Narthoseum. A supporting tile is placed down, restoring wounds to a unit each round as long as it stays in the area. That seems interesting. Or gain an additional initiative point. I could see that being really useful as well. Yeah, let's try that. So we'll unlock uh, Righteous Fury. I will spend 100 points to do that. And maybe we'll try to replace like Artificer's Armor with it. So get rid of that and apply this. There we go. And hopefully we'll be able to see that in our next mission here. So there is a little bit of customization that comes into it, into it as well. Um, another thing that you might be interested to note is that I don't believe that there is a, uh, like a pay-to-win system going on here. Unless, I haven't really looked at extras, but no. This is not like a, a free-to-play game that uses, I don't want to say exploitative or manipulative, but you know what I mean because I already did have say it. Um, stuff where you can buy upgrades, at least not right now. I'm assuming that because this is a... Warhammer 40k in like an enthusiast game, let's put it that way. Maybe stuff like that will come in eventually, but for right now, I don't believe that it exists. So there is also a skirmish mode. You know, you could do a new game versus the AI here. Uh, and, you know, you could play as either the, the... Any variety of Space Marine here, as there are several of them. Oh, you know what? There is actually a little bit of this stuff. You could purchase it on Steam. Let me see how much that'll cost. I hope it doesn't just purchase it right away, because that would be a little silly. I'm gonna... Please don't do this to me. Not right now. It costs 10,000 of these to unlock. I actually don't know how much that would be. Maybe it's timing out right now. This is why you should always test this stuff in advance. Oh, I have 25 right now. So we're 1 40th. No, 1 400th of the way to getting to 10,000. So we're a little ways away there. Um, this is not connecting and I may need to hard quit the game. Live entertainment! On the bright side, it's not like it's a core gameplay function. You're not going to see, um, or you're not going to be clicking this button on the regular, in all likelihood. And uh, it hasn't really affected my enjoyment of the game so far. So I guess it's nice that it's there for enthusiasts, but uh, not the sort of thing I'm really into. I'll tell you what, I'm going to try to hard quit Warhammer 40k regicide here. There we go. It is, it is closed, and I will open it up again. It happens. Um, that's not an indicative, or that's not an indication necessarily that the game is particularly buggy. That happens a lot. Um, usually it just happens to be out of recording. Not for Regicide in particular, but for, for games you do let's look at. So, this is our opening cutscene. I'm not going to show it to you. You can see it for yourself if you purchase the game or see it on the internet somewhere. Oh, you know what? It's Tuesday. Maybe Steam was doing its uh, maintenance and that caused like a conflict or something like that. Steam regularly does maintenance on... Uh, on Tuesdays, but anyway, skirmish. New game versus the AI. Those are the ones that you would buy. You could also just use like the Raven's Guard or something like that. And basically, for me, this just looks like a color change. But I'm sure that there's some kind of thematic like lore difference. Uh, there are various varieties of orcs as well. We can play on uh, you know a classic map, which I guess is maybe the only one we have unlocked right now. By the way, classic mode. If you play that, is literally just chess. It's the rules of chess with Warhammer pieces. So don't think that that's necessarily like a brand new thing you've never experienced. I mean, it's called classic, but you get the idea. Um, I'm not going to play a whole game like that, because honestly, playing a game of like pseudo chess this way doesn't necessarily interest me uh, all that much. But uh, I do like the campaign mode. I like the little puzzles that they present you with, and it feels a little bit more like a transformative experience as opposed to just like a battle chess. Even though it is quite battle chessy, I'll admit. So let's, um, let's do one more campaign mission. Maybe we'll do one. We'll do the newest one, the one I have not done yet. So these have different objectives. This one is going to involve using our Queen's Shockwave ability on the Weird Boy, which is the enemy queen. And we'll, we'll start the mission here. And, and it gets way more complex, very, very simple. So it's not, um, uh, it's not like every single one is going to be like, you have five bishops against three enemy pawns and two of their bishops. You know, it gets more, it gets trickier sometimes. Boys teleporting again. He's a dangerous foe. 
If we can corner him, I may be able to use my powers and stop him from escaping. All right. So on this one, um, you know, again, it's kind of following along with the story. This weird boy, which is the orc queen analog, um, has been teleporting around and kind of luring us into deeper and deeper traps. So on this mission, it's the f second to last one in this campaign, we need to get our queen close enough to be able to use this ability, the shockwave, which I believe only works in like an area of effect. And our secondary objective here is to uh, eliminate all other enemy units, which is actually going to be quite tricky and also quite long. But let's see, we got a pawn, pawn, bishop, knight, several other pawns over here. They have two knights protecting this pawn, a bishop over here, and their queen is back here. This is my queen over here. Alright, with our first move... You might be thinking, like in chess, I might be inclined to maybe pull something like this. Put the bishop up here. This is where the game kind of demonstrates its transformative elements, because this move is not very good in regicide, in my opinion. As soon as we move this bishop up here, all of these enemies, this one, this one, and uh, maybe one more depending on what they do during their... Oh, and also I'll get taken by this knight, which is really bad. But um, let's assume that the knight wasn't there. Um, I would take assault damage from two of them. So we got to be perhaps a little bit more cautious here and maybe dig in a little bit. Uh, or a, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try to maybe do a little bit of build up. So I'm going to move my pawn over here. And I'm going to operate under the assumption that this is going to take this on the next turn, and then I'll take that. So, we'll just work on some different enemies. Uh, we'll do some extra damage to them. Oh, we don't have, uh... We don't have the ability that I got. I must have messed that up somehow. Uh, let's, um... Let's do our best to maybe start to work on this enemy knight. It would be nice to take this out. Can we hit it with this? No, we can only hit that pawn. Can we hit it with this? Yeah, but... I don't think that's going to be for the best for us. So, you know what? Let's work on this enemy pawn because we can hit it with more units. So, we'll uh, just do some simple attacks here. Hopefully, these will actually land. You know, this is a game where probability plays a role. Um, if, you, uh, if you're if you the kind of person that prefers games that are 100% skill-based, like chess, for example, uh, then you, you do have to keep in mind that this is not necessarily going to be 100% your cup of tea just based on that. But I, I assume that you would already know that by this point. All right, so they move their pawn forward one. It does take a little while as well to kind of get um, used to the the different models for the characters, like to figure out which one is which. But after a while, you just kind of internalize it. I don't know why they wouldn't do um, why they wouldn't just take me on their movement phase instead, of wasting some turns hitting me. But hey, uh, more power to me, I guess. So I will capture this pawn on my movement phase, which I think is all right because I have more HP than it. So it wasted an action. I do think, um, I haven't had very much trouble surmounting the AI. I do think that maybe the AI is a little bit, uh, simple sometimes. And you know what? I'm gonna try to kill this orc. I would need to hit with every shot, probably. But if I can kill this orc, then this pawn won't die, probably. And it'll actually be useful for us. So let's hope this, this one lands. And it does. If we get lucky with our assault here, because we're lowering its toughness. So if we uh, get lucky with this assault, we might be able to get the kill and avoid being taken. At least it actually hit. Ah, uh, it didn't kill them. It left them with probably one HP, if I'm being uh, optimistic here. But they still didn't take me on their next turn. And again, I feel like this is kind of just a, a very poor play by the AI. But we'll see if I actually end up dying in the process. But I'm like, why at this point, why would I not just, you know, take their pawn with my pawn? And I, I do sympathize with this to some extent, because I can understand how difficult it would be to not only program an AI that is good at chess, but good at chess within the framework of also having, like, HP bars associated with your units. Um, but I have found it relatively easy uh, to, to just kind of wear the AI down, either by waiting for them to make chess mistakes that just allow me to take their pieces, or by... Um... Oh, that's a big miss. Or by just, um, you know, el eliminating them XCOM style. So I'm going to use uh, Iron Halo. I'm going to use it on this unit. And basically that'll mean that it negates the next damage it takes. So they just took me over with their Knight, which honestly I should have realized and not wasted a turn using I Iron Halo, because that's uh, actually a very, very useful ability. But now they've used Iron Halo on themselves. It's probably has a different name for them, but that's okay. And go to ground, so they're raising their defense even more. And we did get hit by that snapshot, which is bad news. 
But I'm just gonna, because our secondary objective is just wearing them down completely here, that's pretty much what I'm gonna go for here, so... Um, I think now... No, that knight is still being a pain in our side, huh? Well, we have a knight of our own. I can't really move it into a great position to not get captured, though. Alright, what if we, uh... What if we move our... Bishop... To here. And then if we can just get this bishop to survive, it can capture this on the next turn. We're trading a bishop for a knight, which is not a great trade, but we already have an advantage in terms of the number of pawns, so... I don't know, maybe. I'm getting a little too chessy with it right now. I'm guilty of that. I think that's going to be something that a lot of people are going to be uh, struggling with. Is either being a little too chessy or a little too x commy with it. There is, there is a learning curve to wrap your head around, for sure. Please hit. Please. Ah, you suck! And are the worst of all time. Um... I don't think I can hit this thing with anything else. I can hit this guy and break his shield, but it's probably better to just get some extra defense on this individual right here, so let's do that. Enemy turn! They are going to move that knight away from protecting their other knight, which is unusual to me. But I will take some assault damage for sure, or in all likelihood at least. And that one is going to hit as well. Too bad I didn't. Have that kind of luck, I guess, and don't get hit again. He got hit again, so we'll probably want to heal this guy up. Yes, brother, Captain, but first, um, let's capture this guy. Because his HP was getting down there a little bit. That one's a cool animation. I don't think I've seen a bishop take a knight so far. And then we really want to make sure that uh, this shooter boy dies here. Fantastic. He will go... Making progress, slowly but surely, and then we got a little bit more room to get our better pieces out here. So, uh, maybe on this turn we want to drop, like, a stun. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's the second time I've done that. Well, even if you stun an enemy, it just means they can't do anything on their initiative phase. They can still definitely do something on their, uh, on their opening phase, which is what exactly they're going to do here. I'll just skip by that animation, because I feel like I acted stupidly there. Stick bombs, not that bad. You know, explosives, they do damage in an area of effect. Usually doesn't do too much damage. Minus one, minus one. The The benefit that you get is, of course, that it's, uh... Oh, no. The benefit that you get is, of course, that it's, uh... An area, an AoE, basically. Alright, so we're going to put our knight here. So on our next turn, we might be able to capture this bishop. And also, we're going to be close enough to hit these enemies. So, you can't do anything. You can, though. A frag grenade here might be your best option. Or, maybe we'd rather just go for a snapshot on the pawn. This is not the unit I thought I was attacking with. That's my mistake. I thought I was attacking with this guy right here. Weapon ready. Very poor performance for my team so far. Uh, and we might just want to maybe give this guy Artificer's Armor so he can live for one more turn. Hopefully they... Uh, oh my god. Right, I left the pawn right there, huh? I think we may actually lose this. There's a remarkable uh, kind of commonality, I should say. Or I should, I should just say it happens a lot. That I will um, shit talk the AI in a game and then just immediately lose to them right after. But I don't think we're sunk in this one yet. Because our objective is based on... Uh, we can still move with the queen on this turn. Yeah, because our objective is based on... Uh, not necessarily killing the enemies. We have, we have a way out. Okay, so on our movement phase. What would you do here? I'm going to... Put my queen here in the hopes of capturing this bishop. It is going to be able to take some unfortunate damage as a result of this. So I might have to heal it up first. I don't really care about hitting you. I really want to kill this pawn, though. I don't want to hit the bishop because I'm assuming I'll capture it next turn. Or if I don't, it'll move away to a position where maybe I can capture it. Okay, at least we hit. Did not get the kill, but it's got to be very close. And then we'll heal our queen so they'll get a little better here. Oh, they've moved back one square, which as far as I'm concerned is good because I should be able to get an attack on that bishop next turn and, and be fine. But also, I'm still just trying to move myself into the uh, into the zone where I can actually use my area of effect ability. And honestly, I might be able to just like move up 
and then there and shockwave right away. That might be our best plan. So let's just try this. If it fails and we die, that's pretty shitty. But I think we've got a chance at this one. Especially because uh, our, our unit here has an ability called Life Link or Life Leech. There we go. So we'll use that and steal some life from this uh, Shooter Boy here. And that'll heal us for three usually. Yeah, and almost kill this unit, which we then should still be able to maybe generate some uh, kills from here. Fantastic. That means that unit is not going to be able to hit us on the next turn, which is very useful. And, oh, that was my last unit. Okay. Or my last move on that turn. Okay, so I'm going to get assaulted twice here. One of them missed, though. So I didn't get hurt as much as I thought I would. Oh, I might get killed by this if this hits, though. I did not anticipate that at all. So, again, more credit to the AI that I insulted and then it defeated me. Well, that seems as good a place of any, or as any, even though it makes me look a little salty here, uh, to, to say goodbye to Warhammer 40k Regicide for this video. Uh, I haven't talked all that much about my, my impressions of the game so far, and that's because I'm still a little bit weirdly on the fence. I don't love it, but I kind of like it, and it, it took a little while to grow on me, and I kind of like it a little bit more the more I play it. Uh, it's, it's an interesting melange combination of strategy that I've, I've never really seen before outside of stuff like, you know, battle chess and card chess that it, it, there are, there's a genre of games that have chess rules, but there's a spin on it. Um, but this is kind of a unique format for it. I don't necessarily know if it's, you know, a Warhammer 40k starter project or something like that. This definitely seems like something where you're more likely to get more out of it if you like Warhammer 40k as opposed to just like, I don't know anything about it. Is this a good jumping in point? I don't know. I haven't really found myself that engaged by the lore that's coming out of this. I don't know if it's necessarily meant as kind of like a beginner's product, rather as like an enthusiast pickup. Um, but it is cheap, and it's cool, and it's kind of comprehensive as well. The campaign is really long for a game of this uh, of its price, for sure. Uh, the question, I guess, is going to be more like, what well, does it keep your interest for that length of time? And that'll be pretty much your mileage may vary. Again, I'll go back to what I said earlier, is like, are you the right kind of dork to be into this? And I use dork as an affable term. Are you interested in the XCOM meets chess style of gameplay? And beyond that, for like bonus points, do you like the Warhammer universe? If so, this might be the kind of thing that's up your alley. For me, I'm a bit 50-50 on it, but uh, I have found myself enjoying it, and I think maybe my my latent interest in chess, even though I made some terrible moves in that last game, goes a long way towards making this one like a little bit more palatable for me, if that makes sense. So I hope you've enjoyed the episode. You can find a link in the video description below to pick it up on Steam if you're interested. As mentioned, $15 US as far as I know. For now, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.